Affirmations that positively, absolutely, probably, most likely, won't make your 2020 worse. By Chris Hemsworth. Let's call this podcast you need in your life. So I want to share with you other content creators I found useful, whether they're podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, authors, or a mixture of all of those, because I'm not the only person talking about these things that have helped me along the way. And these won't always seem to be 100% about money either. Although, like I say, every goal is a financial goal. The podcast I want to shout out, this is three personal trainers busting food and training myths, talking about how you can exercise because of the the mental benefits or because you love yourself. It doesn't have to be associated with weight loss. Talking about exercising at home for free and interviewing other experts on other areas of health too. Now they say their target demographic is women, but I don't see why dudes can't listen to a lot of these episodes too. They're talking about things like sleep or nutrition. Why not? One of the things I really like about this particular podcast is that maybe it's just the editing, but considering it's a three-hander, they don't fight for dominance and they have a really easy dynamic to listen to. And even when they have guests, conducting an interview one-on-one can be hard enough. So again, maybe it's just the editing, but they managed to interview anyone as a trio and have it be coherent and develop as an interview, which I think is quite a feat. I think it's worth listening to. So it's called Fit and Fearless on BBC Radio 5 Live. It's hosted by Tally, Vic and Zana. Zana van Dyke, I'm most familiar with I'm pretty sure that's how you say her last name. I've mentioned her on the blog before because she's got uh, free strength training workouts on her YouTube and her Instagram lives. And her blog's really good too. She's been blogging for years and years and years. My favourite episodes from the show. So I recommend the sleep episode for sure with Dr. Sophie Bostock. She came up in a a blog post I recapped. She she does a lot of media that I recapped a, a TV show that she was on. So I'll link to that as well. I don't know if anyone did the free trial with Centre this spring, you know, Chris Hemsworth's food and fitness app, or if you're just a member of Centre anyway. I think everyone got to hear them regardless because he was promoting it, but he put these sleep meditations on there to kind of talk you to sleep. Now, Dr. Sophie Bostock has the perfect voice for sleep meditations. Perhaps this is something she already offers. The episode won't put you to sleep until you want to go to sleep, but she's got a really a great voice for talking about sleep, basically. You can't make decent decisions or financial decisions if you're always sleep deprived. Plus, it changes your whole energy and your approach to achieving goals. And then there's the productivity cost when you consider that being sleep deprived is meant to be akin to being drunk. I mean, maybe you know this already. You're like, I know, and I still can't get to sleep. Well, then you should listen to Sophie. <laughs> and um, they also did an episode I really liked with nutritionist Pixie Turner. I mentioned the Free From show before. I saw Pixie speak there a few years ago. Uh, and she really stuck in my memory. She's, she, I mean, she, she's that kind of person. She's no nonsense. Her thing is busting nutrition myths. I'll bet you'll find some things you can stop spending on as a result of that episode. I also really liked the episode with Grace Victory. She made a lot of points about, you know, if we're unfulfilled, like, do we fill that gap with food? Because the nation's got an obsession with dieting and, and counting calories. You know, these can be really expensive hobbies. And it's about control. So she was sort of saying, like, this is a rat race makes us feel out of control. What do we do as a method of control instead? And that got me thinking about, you know, the flip side of that is if you overspend, that can actually be you trying to express control. I mean, it's it sounds completely backwards. And to an observer, it might look like, oh my god, you're in so much debt. Like, how are you so out of control? But actually... It's a response to, you know, the outside world being messy. If we can sit and research something in a lot of detail and make this purchase decision we feel really good about because, you know, we chose the colour and we chose the exact specification and we chose where we're going to buy it and exactly how much we're going to pay and how we're going to pay for it. But the only thing is we're going to pay for it with credit card debt. It's overspending as a as a method of control. Yeah, it got me thinking about that. Uh, she also, does she talk about it explicitly in the episode definitely saw a post of hers afterwards that i linked to the episode about how being busy constantly is is actually a symptom of high functioning anxiety so i think that's kind of a pushback against anything out there that would like try and have you be productive every single second of the day and for some reason i saw um nadia hussein's documentary on anxiety she was talking about being busy every single second of the day because she suffers from anxiety and i watched that being like oh wow imagine baking or like constantly like it never clicked with me um and it was only after listening to the grace victory episode that i realized I don't really know how to relax i think we just get used to living in a, a certain state all the time isn't it but the difficulty on the other hand is it took me six years to launch my blog supposedly due to a lack of time i'll let you know <laughs> i'll let you know right here in future if I make some changes where I learn how to relax while still managing to get everything I want done as I bet I'm not the only person who's torn between like how do you chill out more while also wanting to finally take action on some things that I've been trying to do for years if you do follow up on any of these recommendations let me know what you thought let them know that you found them through me and I'm open to recommendations from you too so who has been your guiding light online when it comes to money or side hustles and online business or is there just a, a podcast or something to read that you think everyone should know about tell me I'm not psychic please tell me Thank you.